Before we started worship, my goal was to set our hearts rightly toward God this morning. So I wanted to ask you a question, which is why are we here? Not why are we on this earth, but why are we here today? Why are we in church? And after you move away all the fluff and get to the core issue, it's really a heaven and hell thing, I'm just gonna say it. It's a heaven and hell thing. You're, you're in church because for some reason you feel like being here will get you to heaven. And what I wanna do is make sure that while that's correct for a lot of us, I wanna make sure that we're focusing on why that is true. And I was, so I was reading this week and I came across something that said, most Americans believe that if they do good, if they are a good person, that, that will get them into heaven. So like you hold some doors open for some people, give away some money, maybe give a guy a burger that's hungry or what have you. And even 8% of Christians believe that that is the case too. So I profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but if I do good, that's what gets me into heaven. And if that's the case, if that's true, hear me out here, why are we here? Because if you can do good and get to heaven, then pack up your stuff and leave, but just make sure you hold the door for some people on the way out, right? Because that's that good stuff that we're talking about, okay? So if our good deeds solve this problem, then God, the mastermind of the entire story, sent his only son Jesus to die on that cross for absolutely nothing, which means that the author of life, the sovereign of all things, got it wrong. I'm willing to bet he didn't. So again, I ask, why are we here? We are here because a righteous, loving God revealed himself to us through his perfect word. And in that word, he taught us the truth about ourselves, that we are sinners by nature in need of a savior. That no amount of good we do is enough to tip the scales. Because when it comes to perfection, which is what God demands, we read that in Romans, there are no scales. So why are we here? The God who says that you have to be perfect, the one that will judge you at the end, is also the one that made the plan to save you, amen? He sent his son to earth to live among sinners, to live among us, to empathize with us, to teach us how to love and how to serve, to teach us that he is the way, that he is the truth, and that he is the life, the only way to heaven and the only way to live an abundant life pleasing to our God. When he started to, when he was here, when he started to upset the leaders of his day, they crucified him. They sent him to the cross. And in that crucifixion, Jesus Christ bore the full wrath of God for your sin and for my sin. And that's good news, right? But it doesn't stop there, does it? And that's why we're here. We are specifically here today for the most important part of the redemption story, which is the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. In Luke 24, we learn that Jesus did not stay in the grave, that God, through his power, resurrected Christ from the dead, conquering sin and conquering death forever. So for us to go to heaven, we must rejoice in this resurrection because without it, Jesus is still dead, which means we are still dead in our sin, and all this is for absolutely nothing. But church, he did rise, didn't he? Christ is alive today. That's why we are here. He is risen, and because he is risen, we can live an abundant life of devotion and worship to God and service to others. We have this great privilege then to partner up with the maker of all things, to spread this good news throughout the earth, but it starts here with worshiping him for what that good news is. This is victory, this is freedom, and that is why we worship.
here this morning because he is risen. Let's continue to worship.